Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and um, I, I have some various topics to talk to you about. I hope I get them all together right now. Um, it's like this. Uh, I've had a number of posts and blogs that I've done on the topic of the the eighth chakra up above the head and uh, and the bow tie in, knot in the eighth chakra and I've approached it from a number of different points of view because it's it's very um, it's a very new notion it has to do with the new chakras uh, that, that have come to a humankind since the ascension process happened and and all the clearing is unfolding that the ascension process that happened in 2012 and now all of the clearing um, we have we have you know these eight chakras more chakras many more but but we have what was originally before the shift seven chakras it's like the shutdown mode of a computer the least number of chakras that we could have is seven and still you know survive here on earth during the dark ages so we had seven and now we have at the very least eight many more actually but let's talk about those eight they can be positively aspected or negatively aspected we've talked about that when a chakra is negatively aspected uh, it exhibits qualities of what you might call the shadow of our personality we can have one positively aspected chakra and another negatively aspected chakra depending on the state of our in the, uh, in entanglement, our soul wounding, the, our etheric net like um, shutdown of axiotonal lines and all that. It can happen like in a spotty fashion in different places and in different chakras. When one of our chakras is negatively aspected and we place our attention on that chakra we find ourselves in the as far as the astral realm is concerned in the astral realm negative at the level of that chakra let's say the first chakra if if um, if the first chakra is it is still clearing and is negatively aspected for us right now and we place our attention there Okay. then what happens is in, the, in an astral sense we descend to that astral state uh, known as uh, the seventh level of hell it's like backwards you know the first to the seventh like that in the old style it would be easier to call it the first level of hell <laughs> and maybe that's what we'll do in the future but they call it you know they call it in the old days the seventh level of hell and that level of hell would exhibit um, beings in astral form that who are either fear death or um, kill or desire to kill and so create fear of death you see and you could go if you knew your chakras you could go on up the chakra system checking each one the qualities the good qualities that the chakra brings to us and the opposite negative qualities that we feel when um, when the chakra is negatively aspected now now some people have been trying during this ascension process they've been thinking they will just stick to um, to one chakra one chakra that feels good it might be a power chakra say uh, the sexual chakra is another one if it makes them feel real good they 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 stick with that and maybe they they act out also uh, sexually so as to stimulate that chakra and feel good about that because they feel good about the act of sex you see and the chakra is positively aspected chakra number two or they may feel they wish to be very powerful in the world they want to make their mark in the world they want to to satisfy the ambition of their lady you know and keep her strongly by their side and like that and so they want to develop power so they move to the third chakra about the navel point area and and they're very uh, positive about this chakra so when they place their awareness on that chakra then 
they feel very strong and powerful in the world and that they can make their mark on the world, you know, and they keep their attention there. But what is really happening in the ascension process? Um, when we place our awareness on just one chakra, what is happening to the other chakras? All right, this is an interesting concept. And before we get to that, I'd like to talk just for a minute about the eighth chakra, the bow tie chakra, the bow tie in the eighth chakra that is happening. Uh, what um, Sri Aurobindo, an ancient mystic, well, not too ancient, um, talked about the superconscious mind. And uh, he placed it up around the level of the eighth chakra, okay? And so there are those among us as ascension years, we've all kind of, most of us have forgotten our ascension skills and are in the process of relearning them. So we're trying different things and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't, you know. So some of us are, have tried placing their attention up here at the eighth chakra and, and, and acting as the director from this, from up here, of the play of karma for anyone who's willing to, to engage in the astral karmic play and co-create reality with them as the director, right? They're, the astral stories that, they, that, are, that are ensuing from these, these, these mega commands up here are, are the stories that a group of individuals that's willing to listen to the command of this director up here is what they, these people will enact this during the day and their minds will like spin out these fantasies. Now, the problem is this. This eighth chakra, so far as I can tell, is, is not positively aspected amongst those that are attempting the directorship of the play of karma so far. And if we don't place our attention up there, we don't know what the mega command is for today's performance of the, on the astral plane, okay? So, so there are people that feel they have the right to direct our, our karmic play, and they will do that by issuing these commands up here, which we take subconsciously because our attention is on another chakra. Like I said, it might be on the sexual chakra, Number two, it might be on power, number three, okay? And I won't talk about the heart because that's a little bit different. I'll talk about that in a minute. People think that, that they're adhering to a group and following the directorship of a group leader, okay? But the all, where we are right now for the last few years is not like that at all. People come and go on the astral plane. People glom together and then let go, you see. And so today I found out in the early morning hours that there was a psychiatrist in, in that I had logged on to, I don't know who this person is, who had like um, uh, his group was a bunch of people who had psychological problems and he had somehow intimated to them, or they had assumed that from what he said, mistakenly perhaps assumed from what he said, that if they issued the command for the play up here, then everybody would follow that play, okay? Which accounts for the fact that there have been all these scenes, these astral stories lately, that are to do really with mental illness. It has to do with, for instance, um, divorce, being divorced from reality. I think that's called schizophrenia. I've also heard astral stories about if you have several personalities, you know, and you're, you have like one persona that performs adequately uh, in, before the social like considerations of other people and another personality or personalities that can go off on um, like a very antisocial or very unacceptable like tangent whenever they're able to, whenever they're not being viewed by the public and judged by them. So, and then we have a paranoid, uh, a, a number of paranoid processes that have been happening over and over again, which people have been calling the predator relationship. They've been calling it that, but really uh, it's, I think, fueled by paranoia. 
you know, and, and so, but I don't know that much about psycho- psychology, but I will say that it ha- that I finally found out the reason for these many, like, dissonant threads of energy happening is that the energies of people who are unbalanced in their emotions or are considered by society to be unbalanced in their emotions and, mo- and or minds is clearing because it is very dissonant, okay? And unfortunately, some of them are manifesting their reality in this mega programming at the eighth chakra and creating what you call bow ties or like tangles of energy, negative energy, that then create the astral play that you hear and that you project all day long. The way to get around that is to simply place your conscious awareness on the eighth chakra and and change the directorship of your astral play. Okay, so so people have been today, a number of people have been taking a hand in this and helping and guiding those who are, who are troubled by mental and and emotional imbalance to 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 talk with each other and to. Um, and to relate on the physical plane rather than attempting to to direct these astral planes. And that is a very good thing because the problem with that kind of directorship, which you'd call eighth chakra negative, I don't know, you'd call it the zero level negative of hell <laughs> because they, they count backwards. Um, uh, the trouble with that is that it gloms up a number of different people, it's starting to rain, a number of different people will uh, will begin to manifest, say, the paranoid-like quality, the predator-prey relationship. A bunch of people will gang up on one person or several people, and, or one person and then another person and, and, and manifest that paranoid-like uh, build-up along with that predator-prey situation. Uh, and so it can result in a few people in acting out. That's always a possibility. It swells up, the negativity. It swells up, and if there's not incoming light, solar events and so forth, to clear the energy, then it, it can result in acting out, not just by one person, but by a number of different people, all of whom are displaying fractal similarities. So, so we don't want that to happen. So what we want is the directorship of our play to be positive, our astral play. And that is what is known as co-creating uh, the new reality on new earth. It's when we consciously choose our own astral story. Okay, And whether anybody else joins in with that or not is absolutely immaterial. It's only up to us to create what it is. And the reason for this is this. Uh, you hear the dissonance here in the eighth chakra. It has to do with trying to force other people into roles of, of negative interpersonal relationships, basically. All right. So, so the way to get around that is not to relate to other people at the eighth chakra. It's an Advaita kind of a feeling. What we have to do is to relate to our own finest emotions, our own positive emotions, and let those flow down from the eighth chakra through all the eight chakras and clear our energy body. So to do that, the thing to do, I thought of something just now and I was trying it and it seemed pretty good actually. You could say up here, you could say, I am clear, I am happy, I am grateful, I am joyful. I am clear, I am happy, I am grateful, I am joyful. I am clear, I am happy, I am grateful, I am joyful. And then wait and see what happens with your astral story. Because when we relate only to ourselves and to our own holograms, it's very easy. It's extremely easy to to change the astral play. But when we think we have to change other people or, rea- or react with other people's negativity, it's impossible to do that. That attitude throws us into a causal realm. But the attitude of Advaita, the attitude that we alone are there, we alone and our higher selves create our reality, that 
allows us to redecorate our own hologram in any way that we want, you see. So, there is something else I wanted to talk about in this regard, and that has to do with the heart chakra. When I'm clear in the eighth chakra, when there is no bow tie energy, when my super conscious energy is clear, then I feel it is safe to descend to awareness of the heart chakra and help that to develop. When the eighth chakra is not clear, it's very difficult to develop the heart energy because, uh, because the, the mind is always being impinged upon by the um, unloving, blame, blaming, say, or judgmental energy of other people. Which reminds me of something that happened today and has happened a few times in the past. And this has to do with groups. Groups. Groups and how they blame people that aren't in their groups. Uh, I've had this dynamic going on for quite some time um, now. That there's several groups that feel me to be the outsider, the person that's causing all of their trouble, the uh, person who is ostracized and uh, judged and blamed, right? And the thing that happened today for a number of people, when they found out that it was uh, this psych psychiatrist's um, group of patients that was directing our astral, astral play from the eighth chakra, they suddenly decided that it wasn't me that was causing them their problem, but rather they that needed to act to solve their own difficulties with their astral stories, which is wonderful. You know, that's the thing that Matt Kahn has been talking about over and over again, about loving those that blame us, loving those that are judgmental and so forth, and just... And just feeling, you know, I, I'd add to that, feel, feel that it's me that's doing it, you know. If I hear an astral story, it's within my hologram, it's my, like, interior decoration, and I can change it. I can do it. So to get back to the heart here, um, so once the um, super conscious has calmed down up here, which we can do with affirm positive affirmations to do with good emotions, you know, uh, appreciation or, or gratitude or joy, uh, then at that point I can concentrate on my heart and I can I, I follow Bill Ballard's uh, ideas about, what did he say, um, the, in his free ebook, The Great Awakening, he talked about the levels of initiation of heart energy. And so for me, it's safe to do that, to concentrate on the heart energy and to feel the heart's electromagnetic field and to allow that to flood forth into the other chakras and clear them, provided that my superconscious mind is first clear. So there's that. So I wish you all the very best, the, the very highest astral stories and the very clearest astral energy and the most wonderful possible day. Talk to you all later. God bless you all.